Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Newsroom. I'm your host, Mahal Ilba. Today is the 31st of July 2024. The month is coming to an end, but lots to discuss with you. So without further ado, this is what is going to be on the menu today. We will begin, ladies and gentlemen, with the situation in Palestine. Two very, very important events that have happened. One is the killing of uh, Ismail Haniyeh, who, is, uh, who was, of course, the leader of uh, the faction of Hamas, uh, the Palestinian faction that uh, was, in, in, of course, against uh, uh, what had been happening in Israel. And, had, and this is a group that Israel had been after since day one of uh, the conflict between the two countries. He has been uh, assassinated in Iran, in Tehran. And uh, we will, of course, be uh, highlighting different details. But, uh, uh, but what is uh, very, uh, I wouldn't say strange, but uh, uh, no, uh, leads to a lot of cautionary statements is the fact that there has also been uh, an attack in Beirut that has killed scores of people. And Israel says, it has, Israel has claimed that it was behind it, but it says that it was targeting a, uh, a certain entity. But the fact is that uh, Lebanon has also officially uh, taken this up with uh, the uh, Israeli government. This said, uh, uh, the, Qatar, uh, the, the Qatar's representative says, we don't know what is going to happen with the ceasefire because of this very situation that has emanated as it has. This and more is going to be discussed in our first segment. Our second story concerns monsoon season which is upon us the rains are upon us but they also cause flash floods they also cause havoc they also cause uh, deaths and injuries and of course deaths due to electrocution as well because of the water and this has happened in Punjab this has happened in uh, Sin uh, as well in Sin and uh, Karachi city as well what needs to be done by the public uh, what are the precautionary measures how long was this monsoon season lead and what effect does it have on the crops and what do farmers need to do this and more will be discussed in our second segment. Then we are going to talk about uh, uh, India's Kerala, where a search for survivors is going on. Bodies uh, have uh, uh, you know, clumped up after a landslide that has killed at least 150 people. Then we are going to talk about the 131st birth anniversary of Muhtarma Fatima uh, Jinnah that is, uh, has been observed today and is con uh, continues to be observed today. She has played a vital role in the creation of our country, that is Pakistan, and of course, she's a sister of our founder, Kali Azam Muhammad Ali Jinnah. She was born on this very day in 1893 in Karachi and passed away in 1987. Uh, this uh, is our second news story. Then we are going to talk about the US Senate that has passed a social media safety law to protect children. Uh, better late than ever. Social media giants like Meta and X have been confronting a torrent of political anger in the US for not putting its guardrails through thwart online dangers for children. Now, a rare sign of cross-party unity has been seen in an increasingly uh, uh, important election. Let's put it that way: uh, the Kids Online Safety Act and the Children uh, and Teens Online Privacy Protection Act has been passed with an overwhelmingly bipartisan word, word with just three dissenters. Now it has to be approved by the Congress as well. This is going to be our lineup for today. Let's begin with our first story and that concerns the situation in Gaza. This is day 299 of uh, the war between Israel and Palestine that has begun. But what is extremely important is uh, the events that have led to this very day. Uh, it's the, poli uh, the political chief of Hamas, Ismail Hani, has been killed in a treacherous Zionist raid on his residence in Tehran, says a statement. Iran's president has vowed to make Israel regret the cowardly action, as Supreme Leader Khamenei also says, avenging Hani's killing is Tehran's duty. A lot of other countries have also uh, reacted to it. And uh, the US, uh, it seems, is trying to uh, disseminate the situation, kind of uh, uh, weather down the whole tensions that have embroiled, because what is very evident is an escalation of the war. We've been joined by Khalid Temur Akram. He's an international affairs expert right here in the studios, joins us after a long hiatus. Khalid Sahib, thank you very much thank to you. have joined us. And uh, online, we've also been joined by Afzal Raza. He's a journalist who joins us from Tehran. Let's begin with you, uh, Khalid Saab. Khalid Saab, Hamas says its political chief Ismail Hani has been killed in what it says a treacherous Zionist raid on his residence in Iran. 
what is being said in media is that he was killed by an airborne guarded projectile that hit the residence where he was staying in the north of the capital Tehran which took place at around 2 a.m. Uh, local time at a special residence for military veterans. A funeral is going to be held on Thursday in Tehran then of course uh, the body is going to be taken to Qatar where he will be uh, buried. Uh, Iran is observing three days of public mourning uh, so uh, uh, are uh, some other countries as well. Do you feel uh, you know, uh, what what led to, I mean, I'd like to understand what led to Israel uh, making such, a, I mean, I don't know the adjective that I should put, such a move, let's put it that way. Uh, uh, isn't it moving towards regional escalation, this whole situation, add to it what happened in Beirut? Uh, yes, uh, first of all, we need to see that uh, who was... Uh, Mm, uh, who was Ismail Haniya? What is his background? He was born in 1963 and uh, his association with Hamas started at a very, very early age. And then uh, uh, in 2006, uh, he won a majority in the elections and uh, he was prime minister for almost uh, one and a half year. And in 2007, then the president Mahmoud Abbas, he dismissed his comment. And he was seen as a symbol of resistance. He was seen as a person uh, around whom uh, most of the Palestinian gathered, uh, whether people in Gaza, whether uh, the Palestinian diaspora, um, uh, they were all for him because of his pragmatic approach and his, uh, I would say he was a rigid also and he was uh, to some extent flexible also when it comes to the negotiations. And he was one of the key men uh, during the uh, last 200 days, 200 and plus days. Uh, as you said, uh, in the Gaza resistance also. Uh, so his killing will definitely make uh, lots of ripples uh, among Hamas. Uh, he was on the hit list of uh, Israel. And uh, I think Israelis uh, 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 thought that with his killing, the resistance will uh, slow down. But I think that with his killing, with his martyrdom, uh, he has he will now become a symbol of resistance. Mm. And uh, this resistance is going to be now uh, spread over in the complete uh, region. Mm. Uh, if we see the record of the Israeli intelligence agency since last two years, we have seen that Israel has been making very precise attacks on uh, uh, the Iranian targets. We have seen them hitting uh, the Iranian uh, National Guard commanders. We have seen them hitting uh, targets in uh, Syria, in Lebanon. Uh, now, they, uh, this is a direct attack on the Iranian territory. Exactly. And uh, it has happened on a very significant day that uh, most of the world leaders were gathered there hmm. to celebrate the new president. Uh, new president. Hmm. Uh, so, uh, I think the timing which Israel has chosen uh, is going to uh, make more uh, uh, the, the uh, Iran, they are going to make more furious. They mm. are going to be very, very furious on this because this, uh, once this attack had happened, most of the world leaders, most of the, uh, even our uh, deputy foreign minister was yesterday there in, uh, mm, uh, uh, in Tehran. Iran, in mm. Tehran. Mm. So, one, the timing, mm. two, target and in, targeting inside Iran, and three, killing of a very important Hamas leader. Was also so, part of the ceasefire talks. Yes. Mm. So these three uh, things very clearly indicate that now this escalation is going to have, uh, will be more in times to come and those times are not far away. You will see within next maybe two or three or four days, Iran is definitely going to retaliate mm. because the Iranian government has to show their face in front of their own people. The mm. new president is just... Uh, he has taken an oath and right on the very first day, he is facing a direct attack inside Iranian territory. Uh, previously, uh, Israel had been targeting uh, Iranian targets, but outside Iran, mm. in Lebanon, in Syria and in other places. But this attack is a direct attack on the Iranian sovereignty. This has happened on a day, uh, on a very significant day. So, I personally think that Iran is going to retaliate and Iran is going to this time retaliate uh, in a much more uh, uh, offensive style than they had been doing it before. Maybe they can uh, have a direct retaliatory attack uh, inside mm. Israel. So, but 
uh, this shows the clear intention of Israel that they are not interested in the talks. And they want to escalate. And the whole they want to escalate, hmm. and they don't. They don't want to have that stoppage. Hmm. Uh, most of the Western media we have seen uh, that uh, although. Uh, uh, Israel was accepting the mediation of US and to some extent the mediation of the UN Security Council. But this kind of escalating attack means that uh, uh, Israel is not interested in uh, mm. having peace. And another thing is this, that Ismail Haniya was also being seen as a moderate leader. Mm. Because uh, during the negotiations we had seen that he, he showed his willingness for peace. <coughs> Maybe now the person coming in, who, we do not know that who's going to succeed him because it's up to Hamas who is who will nominate mm -hmm. it. Maybe the next man is more rigid. Maybe the next man would not uh, take the talks to that level which they have. So it's going to have ripple effects not only in uh, Palestine. It's going to have ripple effects in uh, Lebanon. It's going to have ripple effects in Syria also because uh, uh, the Palestinian diaspora in these countries were bullah. Houthis, yes, I mean these two yes. factions that have said that they will continue uh, to uh, escalate tensions in the region until and unless the war in Palestine ends. And the way this is going, I don't see this war ending. No, I, I also don't think that this is going to end. I personally feel that this action of Israel is a clear indication that they are not interested in any kind of ceasefire. We have seen condemnation coming from uh, Russia, from China, from Pakistan. Of course, mm. uh, Pakistan is one country. We do not recognize Israel. We have been always supporting Palestinians. We have been always supporting the cause. Mm. Uh, uh, our Prime Minister, or every other day, he is in National Assembly, wherever he goes, he talks for the Palestinian people and we are standing with our brothers and sisters of Palestine. Mm. But the point is this, that the countries who can make uh, any effect that is US and the European Union countries, what is their reaction? Mm. They are giving very cautious type of reaction mm. because in America, this is an election year. So the Americans are keeping themselves on one side because mm. uh, they don't but How can they keep themselves? This, I, don't, I fail to understand. How can they keep themselves on one side when they are directly or indirectly, you know, involved in everything that is happening they in are involved, uh, Palestine? But see, uh, the, at present, there is also a uh, political crisis inside US. Mm. Uh, we have seen that how Joe Biden was uh, forced to mm. step down from the presidential race. So with his stepping down, and but uh, uh, he still have uh, more than six months to go in mm. the office. Mm. But these last, I think, six, seven months, he is going to be a non-effective US president. But that, has, that the, these six months are going to be extremely uh, important for U.S. and the future of U.S. politics as well. We've also been joined by Afzal Raza. He's a journalist. He joins us from Tehran. Afzal, thank you very much to have joined us. Afzal, without further ado, I'd like to uh, you know, go to uh, Iran's reaction uh, to uh, the killing of Ismail Hania. Uh, Masood uh, uh, Pazishkian has issued a statement saying Tehran will defend its territorial integrity and dignity. He says, I quote, the bond between the two proud nations of Iran and Palestine will be stronger than before and the path of resistance and defense of the oppressed will be followed stronger than ever. Supreme Leader Khamenei says avenging Hania's killing is Tehran's duty. Mushtaba Amani, Iranian ambassador to Lebanon, says Iran is still studying details related to the assassination of Hania. On Iran's position, only a few hours have passed between now and the assassination. We need to follow up on many things, but we have to make a, a final decision. All political details, including yesterday's attack in southern Beirut, are also being discussed. Because, of course, uh, there was an attack on uh, a top uh, leader, Fawad Shukr, of Hezbollah as well. What should we expect as reaction from Tehran? What are the voices emanating from Tehran in that regard? Thank you so much, sir, for having me on your great show. Yes, unfortunately, the incident, once again, uh, we are witnessing the uh, cowardly uh, operations by the so-called Israeli regime against the, the, the interests of the resistance front in the region and across the border of the Palestine. And right now, we are seeing these happening unfortunately, in the uh, territorial of Iran. Uh, as per the recent statement by the Honorable President Pazishian and the Supreme Leader, they, uh, uh, there will be a buffeting response for this such uh, covertly act. That, uh, they said that the Zionist regime uh, will soon see the result of the, its uh, 
covertly assassination of Haniya. Uh, now I think I think we can understand what was the uh, agenda of the recent uh, visit by the so-called Zionist Prime Minister Netanyahu to London DC after the repeated failure in the war uh, of Gaza, and uh, they just came to know that uh, we should uh, change the direction of the war. Uh, from the battle uh, front to the assassinating game uh, across the border from uh, from the Lebanese capital to the Syrian capital, and right now we are witnessing uh, such uh, cover there in Tehran. Uh, I think uh, uh, such uh, uh, I mean uh, the, uh, the the criminal gang uh, leading by the. Uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, that the fact is, uh, unfortunately, the America's uh, strategy, strategic goal has always been to support this uh, criminal gang. As per uh, the uh, uh, reports that the U.S. claimed that uh, we were not informed uh, from these uh, actions, I don't think uh, this action happened uh, without any green signal by the intelligence community and the leadership of the U.S., uh, so that uh, Netanyahu could once again hide the facts uh, uh, when uh, he, he, while speaking in the Congress um, uh, against the Palestinian and uh, the situation on, going, uh, on the ground. Uh, on the other hand, the condition of the uh, U.S., which is a big supporter of Israel, should also be considered uh, for the current situation. I mean, today the Biden administration is finished in the sense that he has clearly announced that he will not run in the upcoming election. And therefore, if Biden's administration wants to make any promise to uh, to his uh, ally, I mean, the terrorist uh, regime's prime minister uh, from any government or, or country, he will definitely, and uh, I mean, his uh, 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 friends for the upcoming election in the United States is not uh, of much importance because both are in the middle of the election campaign and are not in the position make promises to Netanyahu. But after the recent visit by the Netanyahu and the, uh, uh, he faces more pressure from the it's a citizen, uh, citizen to, uh, to carry out, to manage the uh, captivity uh, within the Hamas uh, territory in the Gaza. Uh, I can say very uh, confidently that Iran uh, will act more uh, uh, harsh uh, uh, other than the, um, uh, you remember the operation of the true promises when Israeli forces attacked the Iranian diplomatic in Syria and the decision by the Iranian leadership to, uh, you know, take revenge, a harsh revenge against Israel. After the successful of the operation of uh, true promises and now uh, this happened in, in Iran as uh, Shahid Haniya was the honorable guest of Iran and it is happening uh, happen in the Iranian territory. So there would be, there should be, I mean, uh, 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 strong uh, 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 and, uh, uh, response. From the Iranian the side. Israeli. Okay, all right. Uh, stay on line with us, Afzal. Uh, I'm going back uh, to Khalid Temur Akram Sahib. I'd like to understand oh, where on the one hand Pakistan, Turkey and Russia have taken out statements and uh, Turkey has taken out very strong statements, so has Russia, so has Pakistan. Uh, the uh, Turkish uh, foreign ministry says the assassination aims to spread the war in Gaza to a regional level. I mean, this is what we had been discussing. But at the same time, uh, Lin Jian, who is a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry, on the one hand, while condemning uh, the death and uh, said that Beijing is deeply concerned as this incident, again, just like the Turkish foreign ministry said, may lead to further instability in the regional situation. Uh, and talks about a permanent and uh, comprehensive ceasefire. How you, if you remember well, China was the one who was behind uh, the, the the whole declaration, Beijing declaration between all the fourteen factions, just a couple of uh, days back in Beijing. How important could China's role be now under this current situation, when there is a huge chance that there could be an, a, a big big escalation of this current situation? Uh, about escalation, uh, escalation is going to happen because this cannot be stopped right now because uh, as I said that this attack is not attack on Hamas, it is basically a direct attack inside Iran and on the sovereignty of uh, Iran. So Iran is going to definitely retaliate. Uh, with this attack, Israel has basically spreaded, spread its wings 
uh, for a regional escalation. Yes, China has been playing a very important role. We have seen previously China has played a role between Iran and Saudi Arabia. China is uh, uh, the stabilizing factor right now in complete world. China has been talking with Hamas factions because China wanted that all the Palestinian faction should get together on one platform and then they should have a negotiations with the uh, um, uh, Israelis and with the, in Qatar, uh, with the US and with the Security mm -hmm. Council so that whatever solution uh, they come up to will be the uh, and should be the consensus solution of voice of all the Palestinian people. Mm -hmm. So this uh, killing would uh, definitely derail that uh, would uh, uh, derail the process which China has already started. Hmm. But I think if the uh, all the leaders of the Palestinian all factions, if they have to behave very responsible and in this time they should not come uh, uh, into the bait which Israelis have uh, again given them to disintegrate and uh, to have their own voices because I mean, this, they, herein is the need for a joint front. Yes, for the joint front, and I think uh, they will uh, give out a joint statement. Uh, one thing is this: that uh, Hamas has announced that he will be buried in Qatar. Hmm. His uh, burial in Qatar is very, very symbolic. Uh, if we look at uh, where he was born, he was born in a refugee camp in Gaza in 1963, and uh, if, uh, his burial in Qatar will be a symbolic burial uh, uh, so that it would give out a message that all the Muslim countries and all the Muslim Ummah is uh, behind uh, mm. the Palestinian people because uh, otherwise they could have buried him in Gaza or uh, within the Iran. So uh, Qatar accepting his burial uh, means uh, that it is a sort of a message to Israel also that all the Muslim Ummah is standing behind uh, the um, uh, all factions of Hamas and all the Palestinian people. Now coming over to the role of China. China's role is very, very crucial. China will keep on the, playing that role because China thinks that war is not the answer, escalation is not the answer. As I told you before that US is playing a very dominant role because they, uh, their elections are coming up and as we know that uh, in US all the big business houses are uh, the, uh, and the Jews are the main donors in the US election on the both sides. So if you will see whether uh, it's uh, Trump or Kamala Harris, whosoever uh, would come on the stage, they are not going to condemn any of the Israel's mm -hmm. actions mm -hmm. because uh, they need funding for their uh, uh, thing. So uh, this uh, void of uh, uh, US uh, playing any kind of positive role, uh, I think it is filled by China and China's allies, including Pakistan, Turkey, Russia, hmm. and China is on the forefront. But this action will definitely uh, derail the uh, ongoing negotiations for some time. And uh, if in this time Israel escalates more attacks uh, and the ceasefire uh, is um, uh, uh, not been acted upon, so I think uh, next few months are going to be very, very terrible because hmm. U.S. right now is not any position to play any kind of significant role and they will not play because they are more now concentrated on their on domestic elections. politics mm -hmm. and on their elections. All right. Uh, Afzal, coming to you, uh, when we look at the different statements that have emanated after the assassination of Ismail Haniya, Pakistan condemns it, Pakistan's foreign officers in a statement that they, of, of course, extend their condolences to the family and that Pakistan condemns terrorism in all its forms and manifestations, including extrajudicial and extraterritorial killings, irrespective of the motives. And they are also shocked by the timing of this reckless act coinciding with the inauguration of the president of Iran. Russian spokesperson Dmitry Peskov says the Kremlin strongly condemns the killing of uh, the, uh, Ismail Hania. We believe such actions are directed against attempts to restore peace in the region. Rush, uh, Deputy Russian Foreign Minister tells the Russian uh, agency, uh, Novosti State uh, News Agency, that the killing of Hamas's chief political leader is an absolutely unacceptable political murder. Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan condemns this assassination of his close ally and brother and says the killing will not break a Palestinian's will. Uh, Turkish Foreign Ministry says the Hani assassination attempts to spread the war in Gaza at a regional level. Malaysia says it condemns all acts of violence, including targeted assassination. 
assassinations. Then, of course, is also Qatar's foreign ministry statement that says it condemns in the strongest terms the assassination of Ismail Haniya in Tehran. And the ministry affirms that this assassination and the reckless Israeli behavior of continuously targeting civilians in Gaza will lead to the region slipping into chaos and undermine the chances of peace. How important are these statements and what impact do such statements have on the current situation? You see, my brother, as, uh, as you know, uh, we expected from the Security Council of the United Nations to come uh, forward and look the matter and try to, you know, stop the uh, such uh, extra, uh, extra trivial and judicial killing and assassination by the Israel. But unfortunately, the Security Council already you know, the pressure by the some, you know, so-called uh, power factors. I think uh, the... Uh, 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 right now, Israel is very scared, and uh, even Netanyahu asked his ministers not talk about the Haniya's assassination. And the assassination of the uh, Shahid Haniya is uh, uh, in Tehran proved once again that the Netanyahu and his occupying government never won successful, uh, never won any ceasefire and any successful part to you know the end of uh, ongoing uh, war in Gaza. Even they're trying. Even they, uh, they push the uh, the one-sided uh, war from the uh, occupied Gaza to the Strip of Rafah and the West Bank, and now we are witnessing such quality act uh, happening in Tehran. Uh, as our uh, respectful guests say, they say that Palestine is a factor of the unity among the Islamic Ummah. So we have no doubt that martyrdom of uh, this uh, martyrdom uh, uh, process also strengthens the resistance from. Uh, look, uh, Iran, uh, Iran's soul has been attacked. Iran, uh, the honorable guest, has been attacked. So a uh, response will be given uh, as the president and the, the second leader. I think uh, uh, with the consider of the current situation and the efforts by the uh, some important uh, player in the region like China, Qatar, uh, Saudi Arabia, and even Iran to uh, push uh, the process for uh, help the people of Palestine to, uh, uh, you know, get out from this situation. Uh, such terrorist uh, activity uh, definitely make hurdles in the way of the uh, peace process in the region. Thank you very much, Afzal Raza, to have joined us all the way from Tehran and to have discussed this very important issue with us. Finally, last question to you. I'd like a short answer, Khalid Sab. We are a bit short of time. Just 24 hours before, three people, including two children, have been killed and 74 wounded in an Israeli strike in Beirut. The Israeli military describes the attack targeted assassination operation against Hezbollah commander Fuad uh, Shukar. But uh, Hezbollah, uh, you know, this of course comes as a reaction of what happened in which, uh, you know, uh, 12 uh, children were killed. Uh, but the fact is that Hezbollah has denied responsibility for the attack that Israel claims it is behind. Uh, and, uh, you know, Israel said the group has crossed a red line, would pay a heavy price for this. And I consider this very strange because hasn't Israel crossed all the lines, all the red lines possible? Shouldn't Israel be uh, paying a heavy price for what it has caused since the 7th of October, uh, you know, last year? And what what happens now? You know, we've had Beirut. 24 hours later, we have Ismail Haniya's assassination. Was this a deliberate attempt by Israel to couple these two together? Yes, it's a deliberate attempt. It's a deliberate attempt, one, to derail all the process started by uh, China. Second, it's a deliberate uh, attempt to derail the negotiations happening. Mm. Uh, it's a deliberate attempt to... Uh, start escalation in all parts of uh, uh, in all the regional countries mm. and I view that this you will see another uh, 48 or 72 hours you are going to see more such attacks because uh, more such attacks means retaliation from Iran, re mm. retaliation from Hamas, retaliation from Hezbollah, giving Israel another chance to tell the world that look what they are doing mm. and we are going to continue with this. And something that they themselves instigated. Yes, yes, mm. yes. All right. Thank okay. you very much, Khalid Tamur Akram Saab, to have joined us after a long hiatus. I hope we'll continue to have Thank your you. presence in future shows as well. Uh,
this brings us to the end of the first uh, segment and let's come to the second and that uh, is equally important for Pakistan especially and that is the monsoon and the precautionary measures that uh, need to be taken under the current situation. We all know the monsoon rains have begun in different parts of Pakistan. We also know that these monsoon rains have given way to flash flooding. They have given uh, a way to uh, electrocution and that is why we see a number of deaths. We also see infrastructure that was weak, that has crumbled and that has also uh, caused the deaths of people in Punjab as well uh, as in Sindh. But in Sindh, it's, it's a bit different from Punjab. The major casualties are uh, in Punjab. If, if we know also, there's a low-level flood situation in Tarbela, in Kalabagh, in the Indus River. And of course, there could be a, would be a medium to high-level uh, flood situation in Mangla, in the Jhelum River as well. Floods are also expected in Marala, Khanki and Kadrabad in the Chenab River as well. And PDM, this is, these are all official statements by the provincial uh, uh, PDA, department of the PDMA. And they also say that they, they, these rains are going to continue till the 4th of uh, August and that arrangements are uh, in uh, place in view of the possible flood threat in the vulnerable districts. And there are a lot of vulnerable districts. Now to discuss that and, and all uh, that is uh, you know, circled around the monsoon season and what we need to do, what we should expect. We've been joined by two guests. Let me introduce them to you one by one in the studio. We will be joined by our favorite Dr. Hassan Rool. He's a public ex oh, uh, expert in uh, public health. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Hassan, to have joined us. And online, we've been joined by Dr. Sardar Sarfaraz. He is a chief meteorologist. Dr. Sab, thank you very much to have joined us as well. I'll be begin with you, Dr. Hassan. The PDMA uh, report states that six people, including a child and five women, have been killed, six others injured due to heavy rains in the province in the last 24 hours alone. It also reveals that 39 people have died, 113 injured due to the rains in the month of July alone. 61 houses have been damaged, 39 animals were killed. Is that a normal occurrence? Does that happen more or less every year or is this different from the previous years and normally what are the reasons behind it why do people why are people killed why are people injured what 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 happens firstly thank you very much for bringing me on board um, this is not a normal occurrence basically if you go back to history for the last 10 years the climate change implications have enhanced the intensity of rains and uh, cloud outbursts and flooding so if you see 2022 where we have a loss of 30 billion, equivalent to 30 billion dollars, mm. our agriculture, our assets, and precious human lives. Mm. So now we have to see the trend, how this weather conditions change, and how much uh, rain intensity we are going to have more. However, in 2022, we have more of destructions in Sindh and Balochistan, if you remember. Mm -hmm. This time it is Punjab, yes. which is having the brunt of the uh, load of all, all these things. Mm. So uh, the NDMA and PDMA do have their plans on board, but I think the government need to enhance its alert system. Mm. Uh, we know that we, we, we are among the first, air, first mm. aid countries in the world, so we have to be very proactive Mm. in alerting our public how to how, how to move about how to respond because the government has to has to make a response and the public themselves have to make a response it is in two tiers all right uh, so 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 the alert system is very important much before the rain comes and secondly the government has to facilitate the the movement of the people living in the flood affected areas mm. or probable potentially flood affected areas to a safer place so i think this is the first most important thing which the government has to do All and right. there is a, there's a list of things which of course we will discuss a bit mm. later uh, dr sardar sarfaraz chief meteorologist thank you very much to have joined us Monsoon rains, uh, the PDMA spokesperson says, are expected in most districts of Punjab in the next 24 hours. He says the water levels in ri rivers, dams and uh, you know, rivulets is increasing and there's a low level flood situation in Tarbela and Kalabagh. There is uh, going to be a medium to high level flood situation in Mangala in the Jhelum River. Marala, Khan Ki, Kadrabad, Chinab River are also going to be affected. Uh, is... Uh, this flood-like situation, flat flash flooding, uh, and you know these, you know, uh, the situation of the dams. Is this a normal occurrence? Do you feel that more and more uh, rains are uh, hampering the current situation that leads to more deaths and uh, you know uh, destruction as well as as far as infrastructure and animals is concerned, or do you feel this is a normal trend? Secondly. 
how long because the PDMSS they are going to uh, these rains are going to continue till the 4th of August is this going to be the last spell is there going to are there going to be more spells are those spells or is this spell going to be a vicious one or is it going to be a normal one what's your take on that kindly inform our audience We can't hear you, uh, Sardar Safarah Sahib, if you can, uh, maybe there's a, a mute button that you haven't uh, clicked right now, if you could just unmute it so that we could hear your conversation. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Omar, for, for taking me on board. Yes, uh, it is now, you know, the monsoon uh, rains when, when they start in the Pakistan, so some some period, week or two periods are, are actually the active phase of monsoon. So this phase is the active phase of monsoon, we can say. And as you mentioned, that a lot of rains have occurred. Actually, what happens that uh, whenever there is a heavy fall of rain or showers like uh, that, especially in the hilly areas, so we, we are quite actually vulnerable because that torrential rain causes the flash flooding uh, because of the hill torrents and uh, all, all, the, all that sort of phenomena that, that occurs. So it, it causes the destruction. Uh, it uh, well the actually the now the, the monsoon has uh, entered in another active phase because as we were expecting that as compared to the July August it is going to be more wetter than July because of the the factors the supporting factors and the teleconnections of um, Pakistan monsoon monsoon rain which it has with Indian Ocean temperatures and Pacific Ocean temperatures etc. So I think that coming two weeks, we will have more and more rains. Uh, um, there, there is there is there will be gaps, but uh, more more time. I I mean that uh, you will face the uh, severe type of rains, uh, uh, torrential rains in some parts of the country, especially in Punjab, in KP, in northeast Pakistan, and even in Sindh. So from from third August to six or seven August, we, we are going to have very heavy rains in in Sindh also. So that will create a inundation in low lying areas again. So up to up to mid August, it, it is very crucial time that uh, the coming two weeks are actually very 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 active phase of monsoon. So we are going to witness a lot of rains in in these uh, 10 to 15 days ahead. All right. What I want to understand is what I also asked uh, Hassan Arut Sahib and he also, you know, kind of alluded to that. What are the, uh, you know, uh, alert systems that the Met Office has put into place to alert all those people who are in the vicinity of the low-lying areas, in the vicinity of the dams that could be uh, flooded in the coming days? You know, actually, the Met Office, uh, when uh, whenever it, it uh, foresees the coming, uh, uh, I mean, the coming spell is going to to be a sort of extraordinary spell. So we issue an advisory or alert. Today, uh, incidentally, it has been issued the advisory, uh, which covers the uh, most parts of the country. So that advisory goes to the actually the all, all stakeholders. At national level, it go it is disseminated to NDMA and provincial levels uh, to PDMAs. But actually, you know, the uh, uh, it is it is then the district administration who, who is actually responsible to I mean the, to make them people um, uh, in in their locality or in their district to to make them aware of and to take the uh, precautionary measures which, which they can take. All right. All right. Stay online with us, Dr. Hassan Uruj. I'll mm -hmm. just extend what was mm -hmm. what I just asked uh, Dr. Zafaraz as well. You know, uh, you talked about the alerts. You said that we need to alert the people in due time. What kind of alerts should be implemented in letter and spirit in order for less and less casualties in the coming days? Right. It's a very good question. Basically, we have a structure uh, here in Pakistan. The NDMA, National Devel uh, Disaster Management mm. Authority, the provincial and the district ones. Mm. So the decision to alert the public has to be made at the central level, NDMA. Actually, in certain countries, the NDMA is being uh, presided by the president and the prime minister. Mm. And they make the decision when to announce an emergency and alert for the public. Because this is very important. Of course. Um, however, the implementation, as the Sardar Saab has mentioned, has to be at the very district level. And uh, the action has to be by the district administration. So the alert system is that uh, with the uh, with the utilization of the meteorologists and the scientists and the people who know the history of that area, they sit together and they decide 
much before, at least 10 days before the, any occurrence of an emergency that now we have to uh, issue an alert to the public because you have to give the response time. They have to leave the places where they are living for years and years. They have to move to a, uh, a safe place where the rains and the floods do not affect. They have to take certain belongings with them and also the government has to be prepared for they rescue the medical services, the field clinics and shelters and food. So this alert is not only for the community, which is the basic core uh, uh, element in this entire system, but also for the administration as well. Mm. So it has to be at least seven to ten days before. Mm. It has to be potentially uh, uh, planned that uh, you have to think when is when you have to apprehend mm. what will be the date when these rains are going to badly affect. Mm. So mm. this system is very important for any types of disasters mm. whether and we know that in this country we have monsoon rains and flash floods and out, uh, flood outbursts and all these. We have melting of glaciers. Mm. So we know very well I mm. mean the history. Of course. So, so, so this is based on this scientific knowledge. Mm. Or what uh, kind of precautions in your point of view, Dr. Hassan Rouge, does the public need to take? Whether they are alerted or not is another question altogether, but everybody knows the rains are here. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows the situation is uh, dire because of uh, the water that is increasing, the levels that are increasing in the rivers, in the dams uh, and the embankments. What precautions should people take? Right. There are two sets of precautions. One is by the government and second by the people. Mm. The government has to issue an alert as we have already mm. de decided. The government, there are, it is more of the, more of, most of the times rural flooding. Okay. So, but every village is now provided with the electricity. Mm. You must have read in the newspapers that a couple of people have died because of the electrification. electrification. Mm. So the government's duty is to put off the central electri uh, electrical point, mm. but that is also required. Mm. Uh, and, but they have, to, uh, they have to interrupt the electricity and they have to teach people that how they should keep away from the poles. Mm. Number two, the water contamination has to be seen very precisely. Uh, the systems in the villages or in the cities, they, the water is contaminated. That is the basis for the spread of uh, uh, many fatal diseases. Mm. Number three, the government has to build in embankments. And number four, a long term where the dams have to be built. Now, your question coming to your question, the people have to take the precautions. They, 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 they have, there is indigenous wisdom within the communities and they know when the floods is going to come. The government has its own role, but the people do have their own role as well. Mm. The people have to move the, uh, number one, you know, the settlements in the areas, high risk areas, which are on the way of the floods should be discouraged. I mean, it has to be understood whether it is their forefathers land or whatever, mm. it is their life, it is their assets. True. So they have to think of alternate places where the flood doesn't affect, number one. Number two, they have to take their necessary belongings uh, with them, the necessary medicines and for food and food shelter, certain basic things. And fourth thing, which I think very important is communication. Mm. Everybody has a mobile. Mm. They should have a power charging so that they should call 1129 mm. for, for the PDMA, for the PDMA, PDMA. exactly, or any medical center mm. or a police or any, any first aid mm. for any type of health. This communication should not be disrupted. All so right. the people should understand. And fourthly, the dehydration occurs very commonly. So a very um, indigenous formula is the black salt plus lemon mm. water mm. Uh, recomplenish all the minerals and the vitamins. All right, that's a very interesting and I think I hope that the people have understood that uh, uh, black salt plus lemon water. Plus lemon water. Okay. That has the potassium, the sodium, magnesium mm. and zinc. All right, wonderful. Uh, Dr. Sardar Sarfaraz, uh, what effect uh, is this spell of monsoon or the coming monsoon till mid August is going to have on the farmers community and on the crops as well? Is it going to be disastrous? Could they survive? What, what is the impact? Uh, actually, the, the, this uh, spell is going to be quite heavy. So as you know that uh, just we have seen in 2022 that uh, when uh, along there, there was a lot of rain and continuous rainy spell in the month of August. So that also inundated the standing crops uh, in province of Sin and Blochistan, some areas of Blochistan. 
so i'm afraid that in sindh for example the the crop of cotton is going to be affected by heavy rains so similarly the uh, in the hilly areas the where the local crops uh, are uh, i mean the uh, if the rain continues and continues so that is going to be affect also um, because of this heavy spell this heavy spell is going to create a lot of flash flooding as well as the um, the urban flooding in big cities also because it is a very uh, i mean the heavy spell coming on so the affected areas may be the southern punjab the hill torrents from dera ghazi khan and the adjoining balochistan hilly areas so that that water else uh, actually when gush, gushes out that also enters uh, the some districts of the sindh uh, so northwestern districts and northern districts which uh, are uh, adjacent to the balochistan so those areas are going to be uh, i mean affected by this spell and i am afraid that if this spell uh, i mean uh, is is heavy spell but uh, if it is it is followed by another heavy spell then that situation uh, will be quite uh, i mean the devastating okay thank you very much uh, dr sardar safaraz chief meteorologist to have joined us and thank you very much dr hasan rooj to have joined us as well in the studios as a public health expert i hope we'll keep on getting you for uh, various issues because monsoon has ended and the plight of the people of course uh, will be there because of the effects of this and climate change because pakistan has been suffering from that for, from so such a long time in 2022 uh, for, you know uh, uh, floods are just an example of what pakistan is going through let's hope let's pray it doesn't happen this year as well thank you very much dr hasan to have joined us let's come to our last three stories very quickly the first is uh, uh, india's kerala where the rescuers are searching for survivors after landslides killed uh, at least 150 people now this is also because of the relentless downpours and the winds that hamper but the search for survivors uh, these landslides uh, struck indian tea uh, plantations and killed at least 150 people most believed to be laborers and, and their families now days of torrential monsoon rains have uh, battered this, uh, this southern capital state of kerala which has blocked roads into the uh, uh, other district uh, disaster areas complicating relief efforts as well we hope we really wish uh, uh, for all the people uh, the maximum you know rescue operation uh, uh, maximum effect of this rescue operation that is going on in kerala we wish the people of kerala also all the very best and also the rescuers as well who are helping them in these efforts then uh, today ladies and gentlemen is the 131st uh, birth anniversary of muhtarma fatima jinnah she is known as madre millat uh, mother of the nation because she was not only instrumental in the creation of pakistan she led the women's movement and she was of course sister of kai our kai uh, mohammad ali jinnah as well she worked side by side with her gathered uh, gathered the women of the subcontinent on one platform which made the struggle for achieving a separate state of muslims easier she was born on this very day in 1893 in karachi our prime minister has also uh, has said that fatima jinnah's commitment to promoting democracy was both remarkable and inspirational finally ladies and gentlemen the us senate has passed social media safety law to protect children uh, in a rare sign of cross party unity which we don't see but it was seen here in increasingly rancorous election year the kids online safety act and the children and teens online privacy protection act both were passed by overwhelming vote with just three dissenters uh, but of course the fill, uh, the bill pay, uh, faces an uphill task because it has to uh, go through the house of representatives where republican speaker mike johnson has spoken broadly in favor of the package but has not scheduled a vote as well senate majority leader chuck schumer in a statement said today was a momentous day the senate kept it, its promise to every parent who has lost a child of the risks of social media just goes on to show the importance of how regular uh, social media needs to be regulated especially for kids especially for vulnerable kids with that ladies and gentlemen we come to an end of today's news room we'll see you inshallah tomorrow with news stories and segments that pertain to us you and pakistan stay safe allah hafiz